I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix, who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz, who bared their brains to heaven under the L and saw Mohammedan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated, who sat in rooms in underwear unshaven, burning their money in waste baskets amid the rubbish of memorable Berkeley manifestos, listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their beards, returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York, who passed through universities with radiant, cool eyes hallucinating Arkansas and Blake-like tragedy among the scholars of war, who burned in hells of turpentine in Paradise Alley or purgatoried their torsos night after night with dreams, with drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol and cock and endless balls, incomparable blind streets of shuddering cloud and lightning in the mind leaping toward poles of Canada and Patterson, illuminating all the motionless world of time between, peyote solidities of halls, backyard green tree cemetery dawns, wine drunkenness over the rooftops, burrows of tea head neon green and blinking traffic lights, sun and moon and tree vibrations in the roaring winter dusks of Brooklyn, ash can rantings and kind king light of mine, who chain themselves to subways for the endless ride from Battery to Holy Bronx on Benzedrine until the noise of wheels and children brought them down, shuddering, mouth racked and battered, bleak of brain, all drained of brilliance, in the drear light of zoo. Uh, the principle of a line like that is to go from A to Z in rhythm and end with zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Who moped all night in submarine Bickford and returned to sit all through the stale morning in desolate Fugazi's, which was a big hit bar in New York in 1943. <laughs> listening to the crack of doom on the hydrogen jukebox, <laughs> who talk continuously 70 hours from park to pad to bar to Bellevue to museum to the Brooklyn Bridge, yakada yakking, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars, a lost battalion of platonic conversationalists jumping down the stoops, off fire escapes, off window sills, off Empire State, out of the moon, who vanished into nowhere Zen, New Jersey, <laughs> leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic cryptic fall, suffering eastern sweats and Tangerian boom grinding and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in Newark's bleak furnished room, who lounged hungry and lonesome through Houston seeking jazz or sex or soup and followed the brilliant Spaniard to converse about America and eternity, a hopeless task, and so took ship to Africa, who sneaked to the railroad yard wondering where to go and went, leaving no broken heart. Who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 racketing through snow toward lonesome farms in Grandfather Night. Who studied Vico and flood telepathy and Bob Kabbalah because the cosmos instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas, stumbling in the aisles of Kansas. Who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking visionary Indian angels who were visionary Indian angels who jumped, this actually is the best line. <laughs> I mean, it's the center, it's actually the center perception of the whole poem. <laughs> in terms of self-acceptance, in terms of Whitman again. 
who jumped, well, I'll read it again, who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking visionary Indian angels who were visionary Indian angels, to begin with. <laughs> who jumped in cars with the Chinaman on impulse of winter midnight street tops, winter midnight street light small town rain. Who disappeared into the volcanoes of Mexico, leaving behind nothing but the shadow of dungarees and the lava and ash of poetry scattered in fireplace Chicago, who reappeared on the West Coast investigating the FBI in beards and shorts, <laughs> with big pacifist eyes sexy in their dark skin passing out incomprehensible leaflets, <laughs> <laughs> who lived penniless over the city hills with half a mustache hanging on the sinister lip Peter Duperu. <laughs> Sinister means left lip. <laughs> Looking for an example of Baroque architecture and spent hours in the bathroom washing their few nickels with an angelic buffalo toothbrush. <laughs> Who broke down crying in white gymnasiums naked and trembling before the machinery of other skeletons. Who burned cigarette holes in their arms protesting the narcotic tobacco haze of capitalism who passed out super-communist leaflets in Union Square weeping and undressing <laughs> while the sirens of Los Alamos wailed them down and wailed down wool and the Staten Island Ferry also wailed, who screamed on all fours in the subway and were dragged off the roof waving genitals and manuscripts. <laughs> who bit detectives in the neck and shrieked with delight in particulars in police cars for committing no crime but their own wild cooking, pederasty, and intoxication. <laughs> Who let themselves be censored in the censored by saintly motorcyclists and screamed with joy. <laughs> Who censored and were censored by those human seraphs, the sailors, caresses of Atlantic and Caribbean love, <laughs> who hiccuped endlessly trying to giggle but wound up with a sob behind a partition in a Turkish bath, <laughs> when the blonde and naked angel came to pierce them with a sword, who lost their love boys to the three old shrews of fate, the one-eyed shrew of a heterosexual dollar, the one-eyed shrew that winks out of the womb, and the one-eyed shrew that does nothing but sit on her behind and snip the intellectual golden threads of the craftsman's loom, who copulated ecstatic and insatiate with a bottle of beer, a sweetheart, a package of cigarettes, a candle, and fell off the bed and continued along the floor and down the hall <laughs> and ended fainting on the wall with a vision of ultimate censored and censored, eluding the last censored of consciousness. <laughs> Who sweetened the censored of a million girls trembling in the sunset, flashing censored on their barns and were red-eyed in the morning, but prepared to sweeten the censored of the sunrise naked in the lake. Who picked themselves up out of basements hung over with heartless tokay and Third Avenue horrors of dismantled iron and stumbled to unemployment offices. <laughs> Who ate the lamb stew of the imagination, or digested the crab at the muddy bottom of the rivers of Bowery, who cooked rotten animals, lung, heart, feet, tail, borscht, and tortillas, dreaming of the pure vegetable kingdom, <laughs> who sang out of their windows in despair, or threw up their groans into the bloody toilet, moans in their ears and a blast of colossal steam whistles, who plunged themselves under meat trucks looking for an egg, Sheila, who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, this actually happened, and walked away unknown and forgotten into the ghostly days of Chinatown soup, alleyways, and fire trucks, not even one free beer, who were expelled from the academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull, who wept at the romance of the street with their push carts full of onions and bad music, who walked all night on the snowbank docks with their shoes full of blood waiting for a door in the East River to open to a room full of steam, heat, and opium, who walked between the violets and the violets, 
who created great suicidal dramas on the banks of the Hudson under the wartime floodlight of the moon, who burned on the highways of the past, journeying to each other's hot rot Golgotha jail solitude watch or Birmingham blues incarnation, who drove cross country 72 hours to find out if I had a vision or you had a vision or he had a vision to find out the present, who journeyed to Denver, who died in Denver, who came back and waited in Denver, watched and went away finally to find out the future, who fell on their knees in the hopeless cathedrals, praying for each other's salvation and light and breath until the soul illuminated its hair for a second, who threw their alarm clock out of the windows in the ballot of eternity, who threw their watches out of the windows in the ballot of eternity, and alarm clocks fell on their heads every day for the next decade. <laughs> who cut their wrists three times unsuccessfully, successively, and were forced to open antique stores where they thought they were growing old and cried. <laughs> who were burned alive in their innocent flannel suits on Madison Avenue amid the blast of leaden verse and the nitroglycerin shrieks of the fairies of advertising and the mustard gas of sinister, intelligent editors, or were run down by the drunken taxi cabs of absolute reality, who sat in boxes, breathing in the darkness under the bridge, and rose up to build harpsichords in their loft, who retired to Mexico to cultivate sex, or Rocky Mount to Buddha, or Tangiers to Boy, or Southern Pacific to the Black Locomotive, or Harvard to Narcissus, to Woodlawn to the Daisy Chain, or Rage. <laughs> <laughs> who crashed through their minds in jail, waiting for impossible criminals with golden heads and the charm of reality in their hearts, who sang sweet blues to Alcatraz, who demanded sanity trials, accusing the radio of hypnotism, and were left with their insanity, and their hands, and a hung jury. Who threw potato salad at CCNY lecturers on Dadaism. <laughs> <laughs> and subsequently presented themselves on the granite steps of the madhouse with shaven heads, and Harlequin speech of suicide demanding instantaneous lobotomy. <laughs> and who were given instead the concrete void of insulin, metrosol, electricity, hydrotherapy, psychotherapy, occupational therapy, ping pong, and amnesia. <laughs> and who in humorless protest overturned only one symbolic ping pong table, resting briefly in Catatonia, returning a few years later truly bald, except for a wig of blood, to the visible madman doom of the wards of the mad towns of the east, to bicker with echoes, rocking and rolling in the midnight solitude bench Solomon realms of love, Rockland's and Greystone's fetid halls, aching for the ancestors, dream of life, a nightmare, laughing in eclipse, with body turned to stone as heavy as the moon, with mother finally censored, and the last book thrown out of the attic window, and the last door closed at 4 a.m., and the last telephone slammed at the wall in reply, and the last furnished room emptied down to the last piece of mental furniture a yellow paper rose twisted on a wire hanger in the closet, and even that imaginary, nothing but a hopeful little bit of hallucination. <laughs> ah, Carl, while you're not safe, none of us are safe, and now you're really in the total soup of time. And who, therefore, ran through the icy streets, obsessed with a sudden flash of the alchemy of the use of the ellipse, the catalog, the meter and the vibrating plane, who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through images juxtaposed and trapped the archangel of the soul between two visual images and joined the elemental verbs and set the noun and dash of consciousness together, jumping with sensation of pater omnipotens, I terra deus, 
recreating the syntax and structure of poor human prose, to stand before you speechless and intelligent and shaking with shame, rejected, yet confessing out the soul to conform to the rhythm of thought in his naked and endless head, the madman bum and angel, beat in time, unknown, yet putting down here what might be left to say in time, come after death, and rose, reincarnate in the clothes of ghostly jazz, in the gold horn shadow of the band, and blew the suffering of America's naked mind for love into an airy, airy, lama, lama, sabatani saxophone cry that shivered the cities down to the last radio with the absolute heart of the poem of life, butchered out of their own bodies, good to eat a thousand years. <laughs>